Hey everybody, welcome to FabFit Friday. I am so happy to be back on my regular schedule and I'm super excited because there was something bugging me with my shirt, um, my first um, fit muslin, and I'm going to explain to you um, what I did to fix it as well as I'm going to talk about my bus start, which I think is in a much better position now versus last time. Um, so this is a new muslin I have on here. Um, I'm going to order some linen to make this shirt out of, I think. I do have that fabric I shared with you last week. And, you know, I may make my first one up in it, but I think I also want a nice linen version of this shirt. I'm getting excited about it. I was, um, uh, I took my mom to the doctor with my dad on Tuesday and I was waiting in the waiting room for them. And this woman came into the office and she had on a, uh, button down shirt and it had sort of a, like a curved hem up by the side seams. So it's almost like there was a vent on the side seams, but also it was curved. So I'm going to do that to this hem. I think that'll make a fun, um, you know, a fun shape. And then I'm also going to see if my sleeve walks into my armhole. And then I'm also going to, um, finish all of the details. Next week, I'm going to show you how to make sure your collar matches after making adjustments to the neckline. Hi, Mary. Welcome. Sorry, I was a couple minutes late today. Uh, what I want to show you guys, I'm going to stand up and show you this version of my Easy Breezy Summer Top. And I just want you guys to know that this muslin I'm using is a super duper heavy duty um, no drape, no softness. It's the, it's the fabric I use for, um, jean fitting and also in my waistband kits, I'm using this fabric, but it really helps me decide what needs to be fixed because it's brutal on the wrinkles. I mean, you can see some wrinkling in here. This wrinkling is probably happening because I didn't clip the neckline. You can see I've got this neckline right at the base of my neck where I want it. And I'm going to turn to the side and show you how it's sitting in the back of my neckline because that's one of the things I fixed. So let me just show you my back view here. You can see across here, it's laying on, you know, it's laying right at the base of my neck. Also, I added some room for my broad upper back. So I'm going to show you how to do those two things. But before I do, I'm just going to slip on the other muslin so you can see um, what I fixed. So this is the after. Let me show you the before. Get it over here. Okay, so I've got my first muslin on. This is the one that I had on. Um, I'm sorry that I look so lovely underneath. <laughs> um, this is the muslin that I had on last week. And in addition to um, raising the dart, which you can see, I think my dart was a little bit too low. So I raised it a half an inch. Also, if you look at the back, notice how the back neckline is coming up too high and it's almost, um, you know, peeking away or lifting away from my neck because it's too high here. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to fix today. So if you have an issue with your back neckline being too high, um, I'm going to show you how to do that because that's what happened to me. Oh, Tana has assembled her shirt and she's ready. Okay. Let me, let me, um, I think now I'm just going to take this off and put on my my long sleeve shirt here because it's a little 
cool today. Okay. Let me just stick on my very exciting black long sleeve shirt for Mary. I know she loves it when I wear black. Okay, so let me show you what I did. Now, to be nice, <laughs> to be nice, I I made a neat copy out of my sloppy copy pattern. Um, if you were with me last week, you know that my first pattern kind of looked like a big fat mess. So I did, in fact, um, make a neat copy so I could um, show you what I fixed without looking at this mess. So if you remember, this was my front. And what ended up happening in my front, you can see I lowered my dart an inch and a half. And that ended up being a little bit too long. So what I did was I did the adjustment that I did last week in reverse. I traced a copy. I um, I drew a box around my dart and I went up like five eighths of an inch. So now my dart is in a much better place because I, and I just showed you that it fits much better. But really the bigger issue was in the back. When I was looking at my back neckline, um, it was really standing up like I showed you. So let me show you what I did here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to print out a, um, should have done this before I came on. I'm just gonna print out a, a back bodice so I can show you how to do these adjustments. I actually made, um, I actually made these adjustments together in one step. So I lowered my back neckline and I also um, did, <coughs> excuse me, a wide back adjustment <coughs> all at the same time. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I have a cough. I have a little tickle. Now, using, now here's the thing, using this heavyweight muslin to sew my, to sew my fit muslin has the advantage of being very, very crisp. So other fabrics, like if you're using a softly, a soft drapey fabric, for example, like a chalet or an, even an old sheet that's been washed and dried to death, you might not notice things like the back neckline peeking up because fabric that's more agreeable and soft and drapey might lay a little bit better. So that's why I decided to use this very heavy muslin. And you can see, like, look at how deep these creases are. I sat on it, so it, it got all um, wrinkled. But basically, having that crispness really helped me identify what I needed to do. All right, so what I want to do is show you here. Um, and if you didn't see Fit Tip Tuesday this week, <coughs> I shared um, I shared how to tell where the slope of your shoulder was. This is pretty interesting because a lot of times people think the slope of the shoulder. <coughs> Ooh. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel like I have a tickle in my throat. <clears throat> okay, let me just make this a little bit closer so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, so, <clears throat> so on Tuesday I showed you what the slope of the shoulder or where it was and how the angle of your um, front and back shoulder edges are not actually the slope of the shoulder. And I'll show you that when I finish this. Um, hi, hey, Diane, welcome. I'm back. I'm back to my regular schedule programming here. Um, you'll have to go back and watch the beginning because I showed my first fit muslin and my second fit muslin. I fixed the back of my neckline. It was too high. It was sitting up above the base of my neck and the back. And I also felt my upper back was too tight. 
So this is what I'm showing you now. This blue that I highlighted on this pattern is where it overlaps. So if I turn it that, the other way, you can see that the overlap is here. I, I lowered the center back neckline a half an inch, and then I blended back to, well, about a quarter. I lowered the um, edge of the shoulder at the neckline a quarter, and then I blended back to the original neckline at the tip of the shoulder. So what that's doing is it's lowering the base of the neckline so it sat at the base of my neckline. And then I also did an adjustment in the seam. I cut along my stitching line here and, oops, you know, all the way down to the hem so I could pull this out and give myself just a little bit more room through my upper back and then down to zero down at the hem. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Hi, Jean. Welcome. And these two adjustments are actually opposite. Here I overlapped, shortened. Here I spread to widen. And these two things really helped my shirt fit much nicer. So let me show you what I did here. So here's my back neckline. Oops, my back. I'm just going to zoom in closer so you can see. And if you guys follow along with me, you know that um, you can get these minis. You can get these minis if you sign up for my newsletter. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm just going to draw in seam allowances. So I have a guide because I'm going to do these adjustments in the seam allowances. And this method of adjusting your pattern, I think, is a friendly way for people who are not confident in being able to redraw shapes, you know, by trimming off the edge or having to reshape, um, you know, the edges of your pattern. Doing it this way is going to allow you to <clears throat> not have to redraw anything. So... Let's, I'm also going to just dash in, here's my seam allowance at the neckline. Now, when I was wearing my second um, muslin after testing this adjustment, I didn't stay stitch the neckline and clip the seam allowance, because if I had done that, it would also fit much better. So it was feeling a little bit strangling. So if you're trying your shirt on for fit and it's got a collar and it's designed to be at the base of your neck like this one you want to you know just go through and mark your half an inch seam allowance like this and i'm just eyeballing it here but it's pretty close and then throw some clips in the curve and then you'll you can really see how it fits okay so just know that the neckline is going to get a little bit bigger when you sew, because as you sew farther from a curve, this line gets longer on, in, you know, a curve that curves in. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I, when I looked at my back view, I realized that um, I felt like I needed to lower my center back about a half an inch. So what I did was I made a mark um, that was a half an inch lower, and I'm just going to draw it right off the edge of the pattern here like this. So let's pretend that's a half an inch from the top. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, and actually it would be on the stitching line if it were a half an inch seam allowance, but my point is what you want to do here is we are going to slice through here. I'm going to slice through the shoulder and then I'm going to slice through the armhole st stitching line and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom, which we pretend this is the hem. So see, I'm basically cutting out this whole area here like this. See, so basically I've cut it out, but I'm going to create pivots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scotch tape 
Okay, scotch tape. There it is. And I'm just going to create a pivot here because I'm going to be pivoting here. This is all, this one's going to separate. This one's actually, that's going to separate two a little. Well, no, it doesn't Not at the very tip. All right. So then what I'm going to do is we are going to lower this. Oh, and I have to make a pivot in here. So we have to release that so we can move it down. So I made a little pivot right there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm literally just going to push this down and lower it like this. So I'm lowering it the half an inch and I'm just going to tack a piece of tape right here. So I push down the center back to the line I drew. Then I am going to make on the shoulder, I just want to move it a quarter inch. So I'm just going to make a quarter inch down and I'm literally just going to push this so that the edge is a quarter inch lower, but up at the, I mean, I have to do a pivot right here too, but up at the top of the shoulder here, it's going to match. So this part of the shoulder here is not moving. So I'm just going to connect that there. And I'm just going to pivot this up and push this down like this. So basically what I'm doing here is I've pushed this one down the full half inch and I'm pushing this down a quarter right here. And what that did was it lowered my neckline enough so it sat nicely on the back of my neck. Okay, and if I turn it around, you can see, I'm just gonna color in where it overlaps. So it's overlapping all here, and then it's overlapping right here to nothing. So that's kind of how it's overlapping like this. Okay, so you can see I've lowered center back and I lowered the tip of the shoulder at the neckline a quarter inch, and then I'm tapering back to the original tip of the shoulder at the um, armhole edge. Okay, so that's how that looks. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the, um, the armhole, and I may need to create some pivots in here to allow it to open, but then also I don't want to open. I want to pivot to zero by the time I get down here. So basically if I take a, um, one of my post-it notes and stick it under here, you can see that what we're doing is we're just pivoting it out ever so slightly to give myself like another half an inch, you know, along my back like where it wraps around my arm, like my armhole, and then also below my armhole. So I'm really enjoying, I have to admit, this is a new thing for me, relatively new thing for me to be working in the seams like this, but I really enjoy the flexibility of having this as an option. Because you can see, you can... Oh, I might need to pivot right here just a little bit. Okay, and if this were a full side seam, by the time I got to the bottom, I would be to zero. So if we look at my full size version, you can see that I went to zero at the base of the hem. So it's giving me all this little extra room up in my upper back, under my arm, you know, and through my you know, my upper middle back really. Okay, so that's how I fixed my pattern. So if anybody has questions about, um, you know, about making room for a wide back, you know, and it could also be my shoulder blades. Um, I'm pretty straight, like my back is erect and straight. And, you know, my, my shoulder blades poke out a little bit, plus I'm sort of broad. 
So I think this here just gives me that little bit of room to deal with all of that because this was sticking up and it was loose at the base of my neck. So I pulled that down and then I relaxed this and it just made the whole thing fit much nicer. So that's um, how you do this adjustment. So there is the mini version that I just showed you. And the only thing I did in the front, I'm just gonna remind people if anyone came late, the only thing I did in the front was I actually um, raised my dart just a little bit because my first fit muslin, my bust dart was a little bit too far below the um, apex. So I'm all set now for the fit of my front and back. I do need to check the sleeve. So let's, let's do that now. And I think here is the sleeve that I showed you how to make last week. This is the little cap sleeve. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with the back and we're going to walk it. So I'm going to put my back, I'm going to move myself over here. Let me just move me over here. And then I have more room over here to work. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to walk my sleeve to make sure I like it. Now, it's important when you walk your sleeve to walk it so you're walking the um, sleeve along the stitching line. So I drew my stitching line in here. So basically, I'm just going to use my stiletto, and I'm just going to walk this right around. And I think I probably already did this last two weeks ago, but I just want to double check it. It's been a while since we've been together on a Friday. Oh yeah, see, I already did walk it. I just wanted to make sure. So that's where the back, oops, sorry. That's where the back lines up with the stitching line. Right here, okay. So there's my stitching line. So this is a B for back. And then I'm gonna walk the front just to double check it. So you guys can do any sleeve you want. I will tell you what inspired this project was, I don't know if you, any of you get Vogue magazine, um, but in Vogue, they started this new, um, a new thing where they'll have an article that's done showing how to style just one piece. And in the last Vogue magazine, the one piece was a white button down shirt and they showed all the ways you could style it for the summer. So if any of you guys wanna make this shirt, your easy breezy um, summer shirt with long sleeves, you totally can. I'm not doing that because I already have this linen shirt Remember when I made my shirt jacket and I've got this easy breezy linen um, that I can wear when I want a long sleeve button down. So I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna be making just the little cap sleeve just for something different. Hi, hi Lean. Um, we're, we're, yes, we're back on the shirt. So if you remember, it's been a long time, two weeks ago, um, I was off for two weeks because I was in Pennsylvania teaching the first weekend I wasn't here. And then the second weekend I was here, but I was teaching my Anna dress class. So now I'm getting back to the easy breezy shirt. I am going to try to wrap it up next week though. So we can move on to something else, but basically, or it might take two weeks, we'll say, but basically I'm going to, I want to get this easy breezy shirt done because if you remember the shorts that I made, my bias shorts, I've been wearing those. Um, like wash and wear on all the warmer days and I really want to make a button down shirt to go with it so I'm feeling motivated to get this shirt finished and basically what I'm doing here is I'm just walking the sleeve cap into the armhole just to make sure that that's happy snappy okay and again I'm just walking along my stitching line And 
And I did walk this last week because everything's lining up. So here's my front. My front is right here. So the back and front end there, the difference between the where the back and front end is the ease, so the shoulder notch goes in the center. So I know my sleeve is good. The only other thing I'm going to do to this pattern before I start cutting it out is I want to design a, a hem. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my front and back pieces together like this. And I'm going to put a big pattern weight on them to hold them for me, even like this. Okay, so there is my, that's the hem. Let me see if I can just make it a little bit wider. Okay, and when I was wearing my um, muslin, I realized, or I just measured how far up, I want to make a vent but instead of it just being an unsewn vent, I want to make a shaped hem. So what I'm going to do here is I'm literally going to use my curve. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up three inches or four inches because we do have a hem allowance. I'm just going to mark that. And this shirt, this is going to remind me of my mom because um, um, I saw this woman wearing a shirt with this hem at the doctor last week. And so I kind of, I really admired how it looked on her. So I'm making this and I think I'm going to think of my mom every time I wear this and going to the doctor with her. <laughs> it was just for a checkup. Um Lean says, how is the weather over there? Here we're having a cold spring. You know, it's been 70s, almost 80, and then other days it's been, you know, barely breaking 50. So it's been sort of an up and down kind of weather here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I, this is up four inches, and I think what I'm going to do as a guide is I'm just going to mark four inches going this way too. One, two, three, four. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sort of dash in a curve that I think I like, like this. And then I'm going to, I don't need to have this right here anymore. And then I'm going to fine tune the shape of it here. Because this is going to be my curved hem. Okay, I don't want it to be. Okay, so there's my hem. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to put my back, I'm going to line my back up right underneath it like this. I'm going to line up the hem edges and side seam edges like this. And then I'm, I think I'm just going to cut them off together. fine-tune it especially on the sides and we want them to match so I'm literally just gonna cut these off all right so now we have sort of a rounded edge um, to our hem here so if anybody wants to do like a little fun hem and then just for sewing instructions on that I'm gonna make myself a my half inch seam allowance right here and I'm gonna put a little dot that's gonna be the stop sewing dot you know for the side seam stop so be right there and then I'm gonna do the same thing 
over here. And I think the other thing that I'm thinking about when I'm designing this kind of a hem is it may show the little detail in that pocket on my linen shorts or my my Japanese cotton shorts because I used a contrasting fabric for the front pocket opening. So um, maybe it'll peek through. So when this is sewn, see, I'll have like a little, you know, it'll maybe it'll peek through. Oh, Lean would like to know, is my pattern including seam allowances? Yes, there are seam allowance in the pattern. They're three quarters of an inch at center front and center back, three quarters of an inch on the shoulder, half inch armhole and side seam. And now that I've done my fitting, I'm going to trim everything to a half an inch. Yes, seam allowances are included. That's why I'm marking my stop sewing dot a half an inch from the edge. So this is where I would stop sewing. All right, so now I think I have the style. The only other thing I'm, I'm wondering here is I don't know if I'm going to want my shirt to just be a button-down shirt all the way or what I noticed was really popular. Let me show you, show you a shirt I bought for my daughter yesterday. She took it into her room. Um, so there are shirts where it's a finished button placket, but then it comes together. It's open like from the neck down to wherever you want it to be. And then it's basically sewn shut. So I may do that, or maybe I'll just make it a, a button down. I don't know. We'll see. But basically now I've got the shape of my shirt here. I'm happy with the fit of the front and back. I will be sewing the sleeves into the armholes just to double check that, but I think it's gonna be okay based on how everything else fits. And then I'm gonna to have to, um, you know, now that I've created a curved edge like this, that's gonna to have to get hemmed, or maybe I'll do a facing, a curved facing. You're gonna to have to wait till next week to decide, so I can show you what I'm deciding about that. But basically, um, I'm going to cut out the shirt band and collar, and I'm going to make sure those go together. Now, if you're working with my pattern, remember that there is a separate button placket pattern piece. So you can see here, I sewed it on. So I could overlap my center front and back. It it ends up to be an inch and a quarter wide. So three quarters of an inch away from the seam is your center front edge. So just make sure you're adding that if you're working with my pattern. Obviously, I think you would do that. If you don't want a separate button placket, you can just extend um, your center front so that it has this additional inch and a half plus a facing to close it. Um, oh, Mary says, if I sew it closed, you have to make sure you have enough ease to get into it since it's a woven shirt. That's very, very true, Mary. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to see. I don't know. I still want to play with that choice. So I will, I will lay that on you next week. Um, so basically, I don't know, maybe it will be button. Maybe it will just be a button up. The one thing I'm excited about having a separate button placket is I can cut out this on the bias so the grain line is going in the 45 degree angle compared to the rest of the shirt. And I think that makes a fun detail. And I can cut, you know, the collar and the collar stand out on the bias as well. So um, all I have left to do here is walk my collar pieces to make sure that those are working and then and also just sew my sleeve now for my sleeve I am going to line my sleeve so when I cut out my sleeves I'm going to cut out two of these for each side so I can draw them across I mean I'm sorry sew them across the hem flip it up finish your um, underarm seam so that all the seam allowances are inside 
and then treat it like a single layer of fabric when I sew it onto the shirt front or onto the armhole. So I will, so my goal for next week is to have the shirt cut out and I will go over how to just double check your collar and collar stand. Because remember, I made some changes to my, my back collar here. Now I don't think, I don't think I changed it, right? But I do want to check it. So I'm going to cut up my collar and collar stand and just make sure that um, the collar and collar stand still fit. Then I'm going to cut those out and I will show you how to construct the collar next week. I will show you how to, um, what I decided to do to finish the curved hem edges because that'll be something different compared to you know, just doing a straight hem after everything's sewn together. I think I'm going to hem the front and back before I sew the side seams. And I'm anticipating it's gonna look something like this, where I did the, I did this Hong Kong finish um, on the inside of this shirt. So it's going to be something like this, where I either do a facing or um, a binding to create a pretty inside like this. It's not going to be exactly like this because this is a, a square vent, but it will have some sort of pretty facing on the inside to finish those curved edges. So that's, that's my plan, man. Um, I'm excited. Does anybody have any questions? I feel like I'm... I don't have my collar and collar stand cut out yet, so I am not going to drag out the big pattern piece. If anybody has purchased this pattern for me, you know it's the largest pattern I sell. It's 100 inches long because it has, you know, A, B, C, D, D plus cup fronts and the back and all the other pieces. So it's a really long pattern. So I will be tracing and, and prepping my pattern my collar pieces so I can show you how to um, sew those next week. I will show you some other construction things next week and I will also um, you know show you how I'm finishing all of this. So if anybody is interested in making this curved hem with me okay it could really be any shape you just want to make sure that when you lay it down it's got a similar you know the front and back have a similar curve because remember well, it doesn't, ha I guess it doesn't have to, but basically you know, you're going to end up with this little peak like this at the bottom of the side seam. I think that's going to be kind of cool. And I guess it does not have to be exactly the same. You, know, you could have one doing something different. You can also shape the back of your hem and make it longer at center back and have it come up to here too. So you can do all sorts of stuff. Mary is saying, as far as a bust cup, I have implants from mastectomies. They measure different. My upper chest is bigger. Um, so it's hard to figure out cup size. Yeah, that is that is a tough one, Mary. Um, probably, I mean, do you end up making a separate front and a separate, I mean, a separate left and right front? Or do you just tweak one bus dart those are your two choices like you can you can cut out two different size cup sizes um or you can just tweak one of the cups um that is a tricky one joy says just got my pattern looking forward to making the muslin and re-watching your videos okay so this is this is part two of um the sew along. So the first week I showed how my first muslin looked and I showed how to add more room in the bust um, without in changing the cup size and I showed how to move the bust dart around last week and also draft the um, the cap sleeve and then today I showed how to lower the back neckline if it's peeking up on you and I showed how to add room for a wider back if you have that issue. 
And if you have a different issue, please um, reach out to me. Someone did email me pictures of her shirt and I don't think she's following the sew along, um, but I am doing a lot of shirt fitting. Even on Tuesdays, I've, I've covered quite a few things about fitting the sleeve on Fit Tip Tuesdays. And so she wanted to know how to fix her shirt. So she sent me pictures of it. And her challenge is she's making the shirt for a friend who's not local. So she sent the muslin off to her friend in a different state. And so she sent me the pictures her friend sent her. And I was able to help her identify a sway back adjustment. And then also um, she needed to... Um, lower her bust start a little bit but I was really impressed with her muslin she actually sewed buttons and buttonholes in the shirt like you could literally wear this shirt she did such a good job um oh Mary has done both things to fit her bust yeah that is that is a tricky one um you know maybe just trying to think even using softer fabrics might help you sort of find a middle of the road um, or making a little bit looser fitting could help you find more of a middle of the road hey Amy welcome I'm glad you popped in I was almost ready to um, be done for today I showed at the beginning how my first muslin fit and how I fixed it by lowering the back neckline and making room for my back across my back um, we changed the hems to be more shaped, and um, um, that's all I have for today. So <laughs> next week, I promise I will be all caught up. I anticipate having the shirt partially sewed together. So maybe I'll work on the left side, but then show you how to do the right side, because um, I want to show you how to hem a curved edge. So I'm talking about this is going to be my hem. So this is the side seam and I created a curve here. Um, so I'm going to be showing that next week plus all my final decisions for how I'm going to close it in the front. Part of me is wondering if I should make it like sewn shut and only have it open at the neck. But Mary brought the good point up. You have to make sure you can get it over your head if it doesn't button up all the way. So I have to check and make sure... If I can, I might sew one of my muslins up and see if I can pull it over my head without doing twister. Um, and then maybe it'll be a, a mock button up, you know, where it's, it's sewn shut most of the way up, just leaving it open here. Um, or maybe it will be a button up. I have to, I'm playing with this as I go. Um, Mary says, how about I just use full bust measurement for sizing and don't worry about cups. You can absolutely do that too. And that's why I'm saying if you're working with a fabric that's more um, soft and draping, you, the cup size isn't as important as, you know, using your, just use your full bust measurement, you know, and that could probably do it for you. Hey, DIYer girl, you popped in last minute, always educational. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, yeah, I'm excited, but I'm all done. <laughs> so my big thing is, let me just tell you this. The other thing running around in my background is I thought if I started draining my pool last Monday, actually it's been, it was a, a week on Monday. Was it a week? Cause it was the 15th. Yeah, the 15th, on the 15th, Monday the 15th, I started draining my pool because I closed it wrong and it was like a, literally like a cesspool all last summer. I couldn't clear it. It was green. It was gross. So I'm draining all the water so I can clean it. So I thought, oh, if I drain the pool, I'll be able to, I'll be able to clean it on the weekend. Well, by the, by the time the weekend rolled around, I had only lost like a foot and a half of water. So today, 10 days, 11 days later, Almost two weeks later, there's still a couple inches of water in the shallow end, but I can see the bottom and a lot of the leaves that are in the bottom of the pool are starting to dry out by the stairs. So this weekend, I will also be cleaning my pool so I can put fresh water in it and start from scratch. So that's the other big thing I've been trying to work on here um, that has not sewing related at all, but it's part of my summer happiness, so I need to get my pool fixed. Um, 
But anyway, so I do want to thank everybody who has purchased the shirt pattern. I know quite a few of you purchased the shirt pattern. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I had to go get it printed a few different times because I was surprised how many people ordered it. So if you have questions when you're working on your shirt and I didn't cover a specific fitting issue that you need help with, please, please, please either comment here on my channel or if you're part of my J Stern Designs Fit Sew Embroider group, you can post pictures and questions in there or you can just email me directly because if you're working on your shirt and something different happened to you that did not happen to me, and I obviously wouldn't have showed you how to fix it then, um, please let me know and I will help you. So I'm excited about this because this is going to be the year that I'm going to wear other things besides tank tops. I'm going to wear some shirts. I'm going to wear some things that have color. I'm very excited. So, um, yeah. Um, also, it's a holiday weekend. I'm usually pretty bad. Oh, Mary's asking me, where do you put the water you're pumping out? Well, it's coming out at a trickle. Obviously, if it's taken 11 days, it's been a real pretty slow trickle. So I've been watering my garden all the way around. And actually, my um, clematis, which almost died on me, I cut it back to nothing. It's now almost three feet high because it's benefiting from almost a constant stream of water. Um, and then, of course, two of the days... Um, Two of the days it was pouring rain and I was getting very silly with myself because I thought, oh my God, it's raining harder than the water's coming out. So it's probably why it's taking so long as well. Oh, Lean says, um, enjoy your long weekend everywhere. Yes, I hope you guys all take take a minute and just relax yourselves. You know, do some sewing, get together with your friends and family, um, have a nice holiday weekend. I'm going to be here working. <laughs> It's my sister's birthday, too. We're going to go for a sister spa day where we go get pedicures. And we're going to talk about making Carol's Garden a nonprofit. So I'm also excited about that. That's a separate side project I'm working on with my sister where we accept knitted, crocheted prayer shawls, or just shawls, really. And then we donate them to... Um, to memory care places and we have a big um delivery in june we need 30 of them and actually i think we have enough but um you know you'll be hearing more about carol's garden as we move forward and make it an official nonprofit. so i'm excited about that as well well amy said that's why i go to the y to swim well you know the joke of it is i really don't swim i get in my floaty and i either read my book or watch something on my phone and relax myself after a long day. So I like to float. And when it's really warm, it's just, it's like having a vacation in your backyard. But I will say that having a pool is a lot of work. Because obviously, if you could see the way it's looking out there, you would be like, oh my goodness. And I called a pool place to see how much it would cost to have it professionally cleaned. And they wanted $3,000. And I was like, I can clean that myself because that didn't even include the water. So the water is going to be expensive this year. So I'm going to clean it myself and then I will fill it up with new water and then we will be good to go. So yay. So that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Um, all right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have questions that I did not cover in terms of fitting things. And then next week I will have things cut out. I will have the collar and collar stand to show you how to construct. I will show you how I'm going to finish the curved edges of my hem. And all the other things I'm going to decide to finish this shirt. I'm super excited. So thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with me for a little bit today. And I will see you Tuesday will be another sleeve fitting. The last sleeve fitting weekend, I mean, the last sleeve fitting video will be on Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm going to do a how to sew bus start subscriber Q&A. Someone asked me how to do bus starts. And if you saw my Wednesday Q&A this week, I actually fixed a pair of jeans for my daughter's friend. The zipper was broken and I fixed it. So basically, I'm going to give these back to her today. My daughter's moving into a new house with some roommates. So this is one of her roommates. Um, but technically she does subscribe to my YouTube channel, so she is a local subscriber. So that's what I did this week. I took a break from pants, but I'll be wrapping up shirt things during 
Fit Tip Tuesday and subscriber Q&A, How to Sew Bust Starts on Wednesday live. And then I'll see you Friday at 1 o'clock for part three of the Easy Breezy Summer Shirt. So we'll have lots of fun next week. So you guys have a great weekend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I'm going to go now because I'm starting my rambling thing. So I'm going to go. So you guys have a happy weekend. Bye.